Wow. Can't believe it's been a year. A year. We've been back in the UK. A year. So back in 2019, my young family and I decided to move to South Africa and buy a small holding to have a change of pace of life and reconnect with family and enjoy the simple life in a beautiful location. But after two years of COVID lockdowns and restrictions, we were forced to move back to the UK and start over again. Well, it's been 12 months and this channel has been very quiet. So, what's happened? So yeah, quite rightly, what happened? Well, last year was an absolute stinker for me, uh, for us. It was a really difficult year. Took the tough decision to move back to the UK because that's where my work was starting to open up. You know, shortly after I made the last video, if you remember, my mother was in hospital and so I was kind of going to and fro from here to South Africa just to make sure she was all right. And she unfortunately ended up passing away in May. So I was trying to move over here, get my family settled, and trying to start working as a travel photographer again and you know last year got crazy and I mean I went to South Africa and back twice I went to Bahrain I went to Ireland Northern Ireland I did two trips to the US yeah it was a really hard year for us as a family we had to initially live with my wife's parents because the rental market here in the UK is bananas and we were trying to find a house and because we didn't have any proof of earnings because it'd been locked down for the last two years nobody wanted us as tenants you know we were looking at having to pay 12 months up front tons of stress last year which is why this YouTube channel got completely neglected. I just had nothing in me to give creatively. And the biggest thing for me was that I lost my stage. The farm and South Africa was my stage. And I was excited about every little thing. If it was putting a water pipe in or growing some chickens or, you know, driving the Land Rover around, you know, that was my stage. And with that gone, I found myself completely burnt out but uh, we're on the up now and yeah hopefully uh, hopefully things will change so we are now based still in the southeast of the UK we're a little bit closer to Brighton than what we were right in the South Downs National Park we're about 50 minutes on the train from London in a really nice part of the country but mad expensive like crazy expensive in this area but it's it's a beautiful spot if it's kind of like you know the shire in you know the hobbit but yeah i do miss the ruggedness of africa yeah this has been a tough one readjusting back to the uk has been hard coming from freedom and nature and views and just being outside and having great weather that's been the hardest challenge for me. Obviously, with that comes load shedding and no government, basically, no infrastructure. It's, you just, you're completely on your own in Africa. But it's been a huge adjustment for sure. The life is a lot more inside now, particularly in winter. The weather's just been gross and muddy and rainy and gray. That's a tough one. But what you lose with that, you gain in life working life is a bit easier here but you don't get the freedom you don't get the weather you don't get the ruggedness so I really miss Africa yes oh man I miss South Africa terribly I really do would I return absolutely as often as I can but a little note on that would I live there again I'm not so sure I would rather have something that looks a little bit more secure in terms of opportunity and stuff for the kids coming in the later years. South Africa unfortunately has the sort of whiff of the Titanic. Uh, it struck the iceberg a long time ago and it's unfortunately not recovered and it's it's in such a volatile state and I really really hope and hold on to the fact that it's going to change and you know, if it does, I would love to return. I would absolutely love to. We still own the farm out there. I don't really want to get rid of that. <sighs> Look, it's 
it's pretty much impossible to compare the two but I'll give it my best shot the biggest one that everybody talks about is safety and security there's no contest there the UK is far safer than South Africa cost of living this is also difficult because if you were living in South Africa and earning a foreign currency like we were you leverage the economy and cost of living is okay but if you are living in South Africa earning rands it's really really high cost of living in the UK cost of living is also really high but you're earning pounds and for example you could have a simple job like a delivery driver and you could probably cover your bills if you're a delivery driver in South Africa no chance healthcare it's all private in South Africa you there are some state hospitals but I don't think I'd want to go there the private healthcare is expensive but it is very very good in the UK we kind of like you know, everybody relies on the NHS and it is good but you might wait four months for an appointment weather obviously South Africa is no contest the weather is so much better in South Africa than it is here things to do and opportunities I'd say they're pretty even because of the value that you can get in South Africa there are national parks beautiful national parks with animals and they really are affordable for South Africans foreigners it's a little bit more expensive but still really really affordable in the UK the Europe's right on the doorstep right it's it's kind of cheap to fly to Spain France Portugal Italy but how often do you do that it, it's still it's it's awkward you know in South Africa you can get in your car within three hours you're in a national park from where we were if you're in Johannesburg within four and a half hours you're in Kruger National Park one of the most amazing wildlife safari parks on the planet in the UK the national parks are kind of just big open fields that are owned by the government and there's a lot of public walking paths and, and things so it's different but it is still there in terms of the day-to-day -day doing of things it's far easier here we have Amazon so if you need something you just look for it on Amazon and it can be delivered the next day without even having to go to a shop grocery shopping you can do it all online and they deliver it to your house for two or three pounds I mean it's such a small amount and it saves you so much time if you want to license your vehicle it's all online it's super quick everything kind of works and flows and there is a system that just works here South Africa a lot less so for us on the farm it was if we need groceries we've got to drive half an hour to a shop you know walk around the shop spend two or three hours doing that then another 40 minutes home if you wanted to license the vehicle you have to drive across town an hour and a half and they may not have electricity or paper to be able to print the license for you so it, it's so much harder the day-to-day -day there you can see why it's such a difficult thing to compare because it's a lot about attitude but also it's nice to be in the warm in the sun isn't it I will say if you are planning a big move from South Africa to the UK and you're a family and you've got kids and stuff I don't want to put you off but it is very very difficult It is a lot harder than it might seem we had family here and we would be so screwed without having family and friends here um, to help and support us through getting back into the swing of things if you're coming here because you've been recruited by a company they might be able to help you center stuff around your job and your work looking for accommodation that sort of thing setting up bank accounts blah blah, blah. but if you're coming in cold and you're like we got to get out of South Africa the UK is the only option let's go I would plan 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 there are so many moving parts to this thing that it is very difficult to hit the ground running without any kind of support if you are gonna ship things and this was a nice little loophole which might help some people out we chose not to ship any of our things couches and TVs and washing machines and all that kind of stuff which we had in South Africa we chose to either sell them give them away 
you know, loading all that stuff uh, into a container and shipping it across the world, you know, you get it here, it's a huge expense to get it here. Then the, you've got to change all the plugs and, it, you know, it's not worth it. So we sold what we had there, we liquidated everything and we went with our clothes and the, the essentials in a bag and we came up here. But the loophole that I'm talking about is I have shipped over my Land Rover from South Africa to the UK. There's a thing called a transfer of residency where they get rid of import duties and they get rid of VAT. And that's useful for something like a Land Rover. We rammed it full of the big bulky things that we couldn't carry in our bags and put that in a container and brought it over. And you benefit from bringing a personal vehicle over which I could sell here and liquidate and use the cash. And it was like a mini container for the big bulky things that were of no value in South Africa to sell, but meant something to us. And we were able to sort of two birds with one stone. And so that's a nice little trick. And if you want some more information on that, um, please send me a message and I will explain as best as I can the sort of red tape surrounding shipping something like a car over to South Africa. Okay, now the big one. What's next? Where are we going? Well, you can see that I'm sitting in my workshop, which I've built. That was another problem last year. I filmed this whole process, built the workshop out, made a couple of videos, I sat on them for a while. And while I was deciding whether I should publish it or not, the hard drive blew up. You know, I was so away with the fairies. I didn't even have a backup. And for a professional filmmaker and photographer, that is like the biggest, dumb thing is not making a backup anyway my headspace was completely different last year but yeah we're in this workshop which I built out uh, to work on the Land Rover which will be here in about three weeks time to fix bikes I started a mobile bike mechanic business just in the local area that's got its own separate YouTube channel I'm gonna split them I think the YouTube algorithm doesn't know what to do with my channel I mean one minute I'm making videos about moving countries the next minute I'm making photography videos the next minute I'm making mountain biking videos so I'm, I'm trying to streamline things a little bit and so I'll be making separate content with the bikes and that business so you can follow along with that I'll link it in the description below but what's next for this channel so since I mentioned earlier I've lost my stage I think this year going forward I'm going to try and find a new stage yeah just to see where it goes so if you will explore with me over the next 12 months hopefully you'll enjoy the content. I'm going to be doing a project with a veggie farmer, some uh, uh, apiarists, so some beekeepers, uh, a dairy farmer, a sheep farmer. So I want to keep that kind of thing going. I, I'm, I'm very, very interested in agriculture and British agriculture has this cool sort of like romantic kind of vibe around it. So I want to lean into that a little bit photographically. Uh, so if you want to see more about that, let me know. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I will see you very soon, hopefully. Hopefully, 2024.